This is the brand new 14 inch N3 MacBook Pro and I have one simple question. Is 8 gigabytes of RAM really enough? The fact that they are selling this for $1,600 is a bold move. According to Apple VP of Marketing, Bob Borscher, and I quote, eight gigabytes on an M3 MacBook Pro is probably analogous to 16 gigabytes on other systems. We just happen to be able to use it more efficiently. Well, Bob, I bought myself a MacBook Pro to answer this exact question because I'll be honest with you, I have been using the 2021 14 inch MacBook Pro for over two years now. I absolutely love the system and it is without a doubt my favorite laptop I have ever used. So much so that I feel no need to upgrade it even after two years and two generations. So when you look at this and it has a lot of the same benefits but it's at a significantly lower price point, if the eight gigabytes of RAM is usable, then great. This might be the best MacBook you can buy. But my gut is that eight is gonna run out real quick. Now as you'll see, this is a silver MacBook Pro, largely because if you want the brand new shiny space black color, you gotta shell out for a Pro Pro, an M3 Pro MacBook Pro, not to be confused with the M3 regular MacBook Pro, cause that, that checks out, right? As a dude who's been carrying a 14 inch MacBook with me every day, this is lighter. So the M3 is losing one of the Thunderbolt ports that are on the right side. So we still have HDMI as well as the SD card slot. And on this side, we have MagSafe, two USB-Cs, which doubles Thunderbolt and the headphone jack. But that is one of the downsides with this M3. I'll be honest though, that's not a huge deal. It's nice to have ports on both sides, but the M3 processor just doesn't handle more than two Thunderbolt ports on any system. In the box is super simple. We have a MagSafe cable as well as a 70 watt USB-C charger. But beyond that, is the display. Now don't get me wrong, the M2 and the M1 MacBooks both have very nice panels, but the actual display on these MacBook Pros is terrific, 120 hertz, super bright, vivid. Like honestly, this is one of my favorite laptop displays on the market, period. Before we actually say hello or hola, how about, do you ever like, sometimes I see like the edit in real time, and I said hola, and then I just saw the frame go black and white and shrink a little bit. And then the editors start laughing and then we just moved on. Hola. Before we actually dive into this, I'm just curious on the inside because I know that it internally is quite different than other MacBooks. The nice thing about this generation of MacBooks, they're actually very easy to open. There's I think what, eight screws total? And then it just pops right out. I'll be honest with you, there is almost no reason to ever open up a MacBook short of Maybe if you want to swap out the battery at some point, there's very little that's actually user replaceable in here. After way more clips and um, pry tools than I thought I needed, let's take a look at the inside of our M3 MacBook Pro. So broadly similar, uh, these I believe are our SSD modules. Um, it also has the very strange MacBook Pro battery, which, wait. Am I tripping? Uh, did they did they shrink the battery? Like, I don't remember. Look, look, you see that there's these gaps on the side? Like, are these batteries just slightly smaller? So, I mean, as always, it's Apple. It's super, super clean. But let me actually open up my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Also, because I actually need to open this up anyway. Um, after a couple of years of use, my hinge is slightly misaligned, probably from being tossed in my bag enough times. So I actually need to open this up and adjust the hinge anyway. So this will be a perfect opportunity for us to do a side-by-side. And this is the inside of, hey, my very clean looking 14 inch MacBook Pro that I was not worried about in any way whatsoever. Um, so actually, you know, if we put these side by side, there are very substantial differences. <sighs> Try to blow. One of the main differences is clearly the cooling solution because we have two fans instead of one. But that makes sense because this is a significantly more power hungry chip. In fact, as you can see, so this is where the M3 is and this is where the M3 Max is. It is just a big chungus of a chip. So now that my curiosity has been sated, let me get the M3 MacBook set up and start living with it, trying to do some video edits, play some games, use it like a regular device and find out is the eight gigabytes of RAM an absolute deal breaker or is Mr. Bob Apple himself correct? And it's just as good as everyone else's 16 gigs. So the MacBook is set up. I've spent a few hours using it. And the first question I have is how is it for editing? 
Now, this is certainly more of a use case for me specifically, but the main reason why I use a MacBook at all is because of Final Cut Pro, the editing program I've used for many years, and I don't want to learn something else. Now, the main advantage here is that Final Cut is very well optimized on the Mac, as you might expect. So here, I actually have a couple of projects. First of all is a YouTube short. So this is a short that I edited entirely start to finish on the MacBook. As you can see, obviously very straightforward. It's 4K H.265. And even with a couple of effects and whatnot, it plays back absolutely no problem. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this could be on my M1 Max or whatever. It is super, super smooth. More interestingly is a full 19 minute edited timeline. So I actually edited this last night on my M1 Max. So uh, the main thing I'm curious about is the actual scrubbing performance. But this project was slightly too large. So it was like a little less than 400 gigabytes, which with the other things I wanted to install on the Mac, it wouldn't fit on my 512 gig internal storage. So I actually have to run it on an external SSD. With a larger project like this, I will say that it does chug slightly. So you see if I'm like scrubbing through really quickly, it does kind of stutter just a little bit, but I can play pretty much anywhere. Just skip around. Honestly, the lack of RAM is not really a main concern for me. Next up, I want to try to game on this MacBook. Now, earlier in the year, we actually did an entire video gaming on Apple Silicon, and the TLDR on that was, it actually is not a bad experience, assuming you find a game that is properly optimized, which is where Baldur's Gate 3 comes in. Now, this is a game that I've been playing a little bit lately. It is a lot of fun. It is a proper AAA game. And unlike a lot of the demos that Apple been showing in like keynotes and stuff, like Resident Evil, No Man's Sky and whatnot, this is a proper AAA game, which is specifically designed for Apple Silicon. So let me actually launch into it. I have played some Baldur's Gate. I have not played on this MacBook yet. So let me actually see if I can figure out some settings that work well. Okay, so it's defaulting to the full resolution of the display. I'm gonna be not doing that. Look, Apple talked a big game about how the M3 supports mesh shading and ray tracing, and it's uh, their most advanced graphical architecture. Um, and with the active cooler, I actually can believe that this will be able to play at least relatively well. So let's give this a try. We're gonna load it up at 1200p medium settings with uh, FSR set to balanced. And uh, let's see how this M3 MacBook with eight gigs of RAM runs. Also, I'll just mention that I'm doing all of this editing as well as gaming on battery life. No, not Shadow Heart. No, not the acid. Okay. All my dudes are definitely dying right now. Oh, no, no. Uh, you know what? Oh, you know, oh, dang. I accidentally need to reload my save. Oh, I hate when that, the, the game crashed. Did you see that? I'll be honest. I play on the Steam Deck. And on the Steam Deck, I get like 30 FPS and it looks not good. The fact that I am running on a base M3 MacBook Pro, mind you, you can hear the fan cranking. It certainly definitely spun up more than I have heard at any point when I'm editing or doing anything else. But this is also on battery and I'm getting 90 to 100 FPS. 100 FPS? I got 120 hertz display. Promotion, baby. At least my you know day one experience between trying a little bit of gaming and editing legitimately impressive. Like, honestly, I'm kind of surprised. Let me spend some more time with this MacBook. Let me actually do more regular tasks, throw 50 Microsoft Edge tabs at it and see how it holds up. I gotta give it to you, Bob, as much as I don't want to admit it. Eight gigabytes of RAM, especially with these new M3 MacBook Pros, is still very usable. There are a lot of reasons for that. I think apps have become more optimized. I think they do legitimately a great job of keeping that eight gigabytes of RAM very well utilized and have fast SSDs as sort of your backup for the swap memory. I still wish that we had 16 gigabytes of RAM standard on a $1,600 laptop, but I went into this video thinking that it was gonna be a complete nightmare and I was gonna run out of RAM, it's gonna be chugging and slow, and that just simply isn't the case. In fact, if anything, coming from my M1 Max MacBook Pro to this M3, I've actually noticed that it seems a little snappier, largely because this does have faster single thread performance. I would guess that three, four, five years from now, having 16 gigabytes of RAM is gonna be a lot more comfy than this eight gigabyte model. It might start to show its age over time, even though it still holds up really well today. And if you do want to take a little peek into the refurbished market or like some of the older models on sale, the M1 Pros and the M2 Pros are still very competent devices. And you can routinely find those for $1,500 or less. That is probably my number one recommendation. I will freely admit that my workflow and the way I personally use the system is probably a little bit lighter weight 
than a lot of true professionals who are using programs that are not Final Cut, that are not incredibly well optimized. And for those uses, you're going to find a significant performance improvement by going up to an M3 Pro or an M3 Max, right? All of this being said, while eight gigabytes of RAM is shockingly usable today, I still struggle slightly with how well it will hold up over the long term. You know, three, four, five years down the line, maybe this starts to show its age. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the ding ling button. And don't forget, for every like on this video, your MacBook will magically get one gig of extra RAM.